so. Uh, Credo, Deuteronomy chapter. Shemaya Sharala Ahaya. Alahaya Nawa Ahaya Aka. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our power is one power. Shemaya Sharala Ahaya. Alahaya Nawa Ahaya Aka. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our power is one power. Shemaya Sharala Ahaya. Alahaya Nawa Peace of twelve tribes are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Shalom to those don't have the blood lineage, but have the surname of Israel because they keep the law, statutes, and commandments. This is a new revelation, and this is our Shabbat lesson. So we want to thank Father us to make it to another shot, our Shabbat. With the tens of millions of people <laughs> dying <laughs> because of Corona. Oh, goodness. The news is something else. All right. So, we want to thank everyone for joining us tonight on our Shabbat lesson. We're going to open up tonight's lesson with the spirit of Bible. We're going to continue to learn about different um, spirits in hopes that we get set free in the name of the child. Oh, yeah. At the end of each and every one of these lessons, which will take us to the summer holy day, we're going to have deliverance, uh, deliverance prayer at the end of each lesson. So we can get set free from all of these um, spirits that keep us bound up in one way, shape, or another. So, um, we pray that everyone is doing well, that you are not being spooked by the by the propaganda that's going on out there, that you stay to your Sharia, stay to a higher, follow the law, statutes, and commandments, and keep preparing yourselves for the new Jerusalem. Yeshaya says all this stuff is going to happen in Matthew the 24th chapter, so we understand and know that all this stuff is going to happen, but because we are focused on the New Jerusalem, our focus is not on what's going on in the world. We still have an ear and an eye open. I'm not saying totally shut off, but don't let it consume you to the point where you're not in your Bible, you're not in your Word, you're not um, being discerned with the times. You're cons you're sitting up there wondering what certain individuals are going to do and what certain government entities are going to be doing. We need to stay focused and so we can get to the New Jerusalem. Because all this worrying about what's going on now, um, Yeshaya isn't going to say you're exempt because of everything that's going on now. It's going to hold you accountable. All right, so with that being said, we're going to get right to our lesson, the spirit of bondage, and to get set free from the spirit of bondage. News reports, spirit of bondage. Our next holy day is Pentecost, May 2nd. We'll have our teaching on Pentecost that day. The summer holy day is June 13th. Our temples, our summer prayer for Friday nights, it'll be about prayer, and then for the Shabbat lessons, will be about Yeshai. Our language classes and our Bible studies are on hold for right now. We'll let you know when they resume. What is the spirit of bondage? If I ask you what the spirit of bondage is, what would you think it is? Oh. 
What? Spirits to keep you from the most high. Oh, something that keep you from getting set free. Spiritual bondage. What is spiritual bondage? Um, what is Israel? Israel? Uh, it's a Anything that can keep you from walking with Yeshua. Every one of the spirits that we talked about will keep you from walking with Yeshua. Specifically, bondage. Well, let's see what it means. Bondage means a state of being a slave. Yeshua says, if you, if you sin, who is your father? You serve who you, who you, um, you serve who you, you know, look at the scripture coming up. The state of being a slave, the state of being a spiritual slave. So bondage is being a slave. Spiritual bondage is being a spiritual slave. Okay? So, spiritual bondage keeps us away from fully submitting to Yeshai. Spiritual bondage keeps us away from that. It stops us from fully serving Yeshia and also spiritual bondage it negates the power of Yeshia in our life it negates it because what you are spiritually attached to or bound to is who you will serve and if it's the devil then that power that Yeshia has that strength that Yeshia has um, the spirit of bondage takes that away. Spiritual bondage is, the term spiritual bondage is not in the Bible, but the Bible talks about unbelievers that are in bondage to sin, and of course it talks about the devil. So we can understand that the spirit of bondage is to those who are unbelievers, those who are in sin, and those who father is the devil. So let's get the scripture that I so butchered up early. Let's go John 8 and 34. And let Yeshia, whose words are much more eloquent than mine, speak. John 8 and 34. And let's read that. John chapter 8, verse 34. Yeshia answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. Whoever committed sin is the servant of sin. If you commit sin, then you are bound to sin. You are bound to whatever it is that you are committing. Thus, if you are a servant of sin, then who is your father? Romans 6. Who is your father? And we always say, when Yeshua says, verily, verily, you must pay attention because those are the first things that you're going to be judged on. When he says, verily, verily, you must, must pay attention. I would suggest you highlight John 8 and 34 or any place else in the Bible where he says, verily, verily. Because those are the first things when the books are being opened up that you're going to be judged on. That's like when you're at school and your teacher tell you, really pay attention to this section. Make mm -hmm. sure you take good notes on this section because it's going to be on a test. It's going to be on a test. Mm -hmm. okay. We're going to go to Romans 6. We're going to read verse 6, 16, and 19. Romans 6. We're going to read verse 6, 16, and then 19. 
the spirit of bondage. Read that. Romans chapter 6, verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. That the body of sin might be destroyed. You're not serving that old Adam anymore. You're serving Yeshia. Supposedly you're serving Yeshia. When you serve Yeshia, that old body is destroyed. That we should not serve sin. 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, mm -hmm. his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. So you, whoever it is that you serve, is the one who you obey. If you continue, and this is what the spirit of bondage is. Mm -hmm. The spirit of bondage is not necessarily like lying or manipulation. The spirit of bondage keeps you in those sins. Mm -hmm. Rebellion. It, right, rebellion, lying, cheating. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about the spirit of error. We talked about multitudes of spirits, procrastination. Mm -hmm. So we talk about these different spirits. This spirit right here keeps you bound to those that we have talked about previously and those that we're going to talk about in the future. So this spirit has to be cast out. You have to cast this spirit of bondage out along with whatever other vice that you're operating with. Because if you cast that one out, if you cast, let's say, um, smoking out, you have an addiction to smoking drugs. You cast that spirit out, but the spirit of bondage is still inside. Mm -hmm. So that drug addiction spirit replaces itself with an alcohol spirit. It's still the spirit of bondage because now that person is not going to want to do crack cocaine anymore, but then it's heightened because they used to drink beer. Now they're drinking 150 proof alcohol or 210 proof. That's why when we would pray for people one on one, we would say whatever is binding that person to the devil, we would break it in the name of Yeshua. So you have whatever chains, whatever bondage is connecting you to the devil. When you're doing deliverance, you have to break it. You have to cast out the spirit of bondage. And a lot of uh, people who supposedly know and do deliverance, they don't do that. And the, they don't do it because of the fact maybe it's unlearned. But you must cast out the spirit of bondage whenever you're praying for somebody or break the bands of bondage on that person. Right, so the Bible says that if you yield yourselves to obey, whoever you yield yourself to obey, you will serve. Mm -hmm. Whether it be sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. Mm -hmm. Verse 19. I speak after the, man, the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield ye your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. All right? So we're going to talk about the spirit of infirmary in a couple of weeks. But you yield your flesh to infirmary. And when you yield your flesh to infirmary, you become members or servants of unclean, unclean spirits. Iniquity. Which I believe we're going to talk about you yield your members. And it's harder for you to be righteous and holy unto the most high. People who believe cannot be a possession or a slave or Satan because you were bought with the blood of your shine. You can't be in possession of with the devil. Okay. Uh so the question is, 
Can same cause infirmities one well one our in our bodies? Sin can cause infirmities in your body. Um, last summer we did a teaching on health healing, and with those teachings we showed the different um, different types of sin and what it does to the body. Um, if you operate in sin, more than likely you're dealing with some type of stress. Stress is a huge detriment to the body because it attacks so many areas in the body, including the mind. So yes, see, if you operate in sin, it will bring on sickness and you will catch or get a disease unto death. There was a certain king who committed sin, leprosy, Uzziah, and he caught that because of the fact that he went into the temple and thought that he was bigger than the Levite priest and started lighting up stuff all over to him. No, you can't do that. Shiite took care of him. He got leprosy unto death. So sin can bring on disease or sickness unto death. Okay. So instead of being bound by sin, we should be bound in righteousness. Because Yeshua has given us righteousness through his blood. 1 Peter 1 and 18. Yeshua has given us that through his blood. Yeshua has provided us freedom. Where we don't have to be bound by um, sin. Where we don't have to be bound by the spirit of bondage. And we're going to read 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your father, mm -hmm. but with the precious blood of Hamashiach, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. With a lamb without blemish and without spot. The precious blood of the Shire redeems you. You're not held by corruptible things. Silver and gold is corruptible. Your vain conversations are corruptible. But because of the fact you were bought by the blood of the Shire, you don't have the spirit of bondage. This does not mean that believers cannot experience spiritual or demonic oppression as a result to your own sinful choices or your upbringing. Because of your choices and because of your upbringing, you experience spiritual or demonic oppression. And that's what the demons want to do. They want to oppress you. They want to destroy you. When we become a believer, so when, we, when someone becomes a believer, when we become a believer, you have lived a life in certain specific sins. And you go on so long that you don't even recognize it as being sin. Sometimes we go through life and we don't understand that what we are doing is a sin. Right? There was a young man when we were in Christianity. And this young man, um, when you would go to McDonald's and you would get the refills, and they would give you the cup, and you would get all the refills you want, he thought that that meant, because he purchased the cup, that he can get free refills for life. <laughs> so he would go into the store, and he would just fill up his cup and walk out. And it wasn't until we had an outing. And we were in McDonald's. And this was like brand new in Christianity. And he got the cup. He filled it up. And as we were walking out, one of the brothers said, hey, did you pay for that? And he was like, no, this is my free fill cup. I get, a free, I get free refills with this cup. So we had to tell him that, brother, you've been stealing for the last several months. 
Despite being saved, repeatedly asking the sheriff for forgiveness, they need to make an additional action to make a change in their life. You continually repent, repent, repent all over the place. You ask for forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness. There's a reason why that constant habitual sin goes on because you have not gotten delivered from the spirit of bondage. Mm. Let's go Ephesians 4, 22 to 24. Mm. So, so Paul, Paul tells us and he instructs us in first in Ephesians 4, 22 to 24. So let's see something. Let's read that. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22. That ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the to the deceitful lust. All right, so that ye put off concerning the former conversation of the old man. That's the old person who you were, which is corrupt. That old man is corrupt. Verse 20, the spirit of bondage. Get delivered from the spirit of bondage. Yep. 24. And that ye put on the new man, which after the most high is created in righteousness and true holiness. And put on the new man. So Paul tells us in verse 22, get rid of that old man. It's corrupt. It's deceitful. Then when you get rid of that old man, get a renewing in your mind. Get rid of the spirit of bondage. Be renewed in your mind and then start acting like you are a child of Yeshua. Start acting like you are a child of Yeshua and stop acting like you are a puppet for the devil. Woo! Come on, stop doing it. I thought you said you were preaching that. Uh, for those who are waiting for me to preach tonight, I kind of got mixed up because I <laughs> thought I was doing the lessons in March. So then I'm thinking, okay, we got, we can go and take care of this one. When in fact, yes, we were supposed to be preaching tonight. We will preach next Shabbat. I apologize for those. <laughs> it was a clicking sound on the TV. What, a hammer in here? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's wrong. <laughs> Ooh, that's wrong. Can we check the check the sound and see? Yeah, it is. Why is it clicking? Yes, yes. Why is it clicking? All right, we're going to check the sound and see if it is clicking. Because I don't know why it would be clicking. We don't know where it's coming from. I don't know. Turn off the fan. Let's see. No, that's not like something in the wires. I want to pour it to something. Is everything pushed all the way in? Yeah. Okay. What about if we try, we can't do this without the mic? Without that mic on top of that camera, right? No, we can't. You can't? Yeah. yeah. Just take the mic off. Well, where is they listening? Come on, man. We ain't got time. Is the mic on? Try it now. Let's get clicking. Let's get clicking. 
percentage of food that they cost to the camera. That's why. All right, let's go. All right, so the righteousness of your mind. Let's get 2 Corinthians 10, um, verses 3 through 5. Second Corinthians 10, starting at verse 3. Let's read. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. We walk in the flesh, we don't war after the flesh. For, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the Most High to the pulling down of strongholds, mm -hmm. casting down imagination. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of the Most High, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of the Messiah. This is how you do. This is how you defeat the spirit of bondage. We all know that we are in a war because we live in these fleshly bodies. But the weapons that we have are not carnal, meaning guns and knives. The weapon that we have is the word of the Most High, mighty. And the word of the Most High pull down strongholds. And this stronghold is bondage. The word pulls it down, casting down imaginations and everything that exalted itself against the knowledge. Demons, they exalt themselves against the knowledge of the Most High. So what you have to do is bring into captivity every single thought that comes into your mind. Every single thought. Bring it into captivity. And bring it to the obedience of Yeshia. Because if it's of Yeshia, it's going to follow through. If it's not of Yeshia, then automatically it stops. But because we war, we walk, we walk in the flesh, and we don't understand that we don't war in the flesh. We don't war against or war after the flesh. We walk through with the flesh. When those thoughts come in, we don't cast them down. And we don't bring them into captivity. We don't bring it into the obedience of the shine. It's the spirit of bondage that you need to bring into captivity. Every thought to the obedience of your shine. The spirit of bondage is not going to agree with the the spirit of bondage is not going to agree with what the Bible has and the word of the most high. It's always going to exalt itself against the knowledge of the Most High. So if you want to serve Yeshua, and you want to serve the Most High, and you want to make it to the New Jerusalem, then by gosh, you need to bring into captivity those thoughts that come into your head that have you doing all kinds of weird and crazy things, saying all kinds of weird and crazy things. It's the spirit of bondage that makes those things happen. So now you got to get rid of that foolish spirit. Then you got to get rid of the spirit of bondage that kept the foolish spirit in in the first place. Mm -hmm. Well, whatever it is, whatever sin that you're operating in, the spirit of bondage is that glue that keeps those demonic demons inside. You get rid of the spirit of bondage. Chances are you will be set free because everybody has free will. Matthew 6 and 13. Uh, Someone uh, is a, said, this lockdown thing going down can allow much time for your mind to wander off. Yes, it could. If you get delivered from something and you keep this bondage spirit inside of you, and the deliverance minister doesn't set get that bondage spirit out, it could lead for procrastination for something else. 
something much more dangerous to come through. There are, oh, go ahead. You know, people say this lockdown, I feel like I'm more busier than ever. Oh, wait, you talking about the lockdown? Yeah, this lockdown thing going down can allow much time for your mind to wander off. No, if your mind I've is... I've been more busier since... That's what I'm saying. I'm like, wait a minute. Because one thing, I'm in prayer more. Right. You know what I mean? I'm in prayer, and I'm making sure I stay connected to the Father because if something is happening, I want to make sure I'm connected to Him so I can hear about it before, I, you know. And I, a lockdown... What is that? Because I'm telling you, we've been out, we've been more busier than I have been in the last couple of months. So it's like all that stuff that's going on out in the world, that stuff is not all praise to the most high. It's not touching us, it's not pertaining to us because our mind is on him. Our focus is on him. You know what I mean? So, like Shepherd was saying, that, that that bondage spirit would have people fearful. Even people that's in this truth that knows exactly what's going on, but they will still be fearful. But why? Yeshua told us that he did not give us the spirit of fear. So why are we accepting something that he did not give us? Right. What are we fear for? It's a win-win situation. If they take you out, you're going to Abraham's bosom. If you make it, you go into the wilderness. So, and that's why the 12 disciples, they knew it. The apostle Paul, he knew it. That they didn't fear death because they knew that they were going to um, Abraham's bosom. They knew it was a win-win situation. So they didn't fear death. They didn't care about the things of the world, you know? Mm -hmm. So now you have to make sure that your mind is kept on the things of heaven. Right. That we're not saying being in your Bible twenty four hours a day because that can become a That's bad another thing. spirit. Yeah. So that can become that can become a bad thing. Mm -hmm. But live your life according to the scripture. Live. Live. If if you have a ministry or if you're ministering to someone, pray for people, like whatever you're doing. What is What should you be doing differently? Right. You should still be serving the Most High. What should we be doing differently? Right. And in fact, you should be serving Him even better. Because now you're starting to see perilous times. Oh, you're yeah. starting to see pestilence. You're starting to see this stuff. So this should be like, wait a minute. Okay. This is a, this is, remember when we said, I th we said a couple of years ago that <laughs> the whole gay marriage was a marker, was a big marker of what's to come. We said that a couple of years ago, and I know I'm sounding like somebody. I know, that's why I laugh. <laughs> but we said that a couple of years ago, that when they instituted gay marriage, that's a huge marker for what's to come. And everybody was jubilant, everybody was excited. And everybody was upset because of gay marriage. But look at it now. Oh, they said you talked before that all seals have been opened. Yeah. That all the seals have been opened. Open. Yeah. The trumpets haven't been played, but the seals have been opened. Because the, the Bible says in Revelation, who was the one who is the one worthy to break the seals open? That was your shy. He was the only one that was worthy to break the seals open. Have all the trumpets played? No. This is our revelation where we talk about what possible trumpet we are in. But if you're hiding Before, and you're fearful and your mind is wandering out. Uh, all those. You're going to be so consumed with that that you're going to miss it. Right? So at this time, we should be more focused on the most high. We should be more focused on our walk. Yeah, they said uh, their mind has been at peace. All the at peace. We should, be. we should be at peace. We yeah. shouldn't be like, oh my goodness. <laughs> that man just coughed. He got corona. And he was <laughs> drinking on a, some water. 
you know, he went down the wrong way. He, <coughs> all of a sudden, you get people that are mass panic. Well, I'll tell you one thing. If a person is like that, most definitely your ministry is not a deliverance ministry. Because in a deliverance ministry, you get coughed on, thrown up on, you get urinated on, you get blood, blood everything. We have been through it all. We right. have been through it all. The insurance kept us. We prayed for a man who had full-blown AIDS, right? And of course, no blood transfer because you'll get it too. This got bleed on, bled on us left and right. That was almost ten years ago, maybe longer. No, it was about seven or eight. Maybe eight, nine. Maybe nine. Yeah. Maybe about nine. Right. So this got full-blown AIDS. Blood squirting everywhere. Right? And we were praying for him. We were fighting. He was fighting. Got mm -hmm. delivered. No more AIDS. We don't have AIDS. No. You can tell because, look, I'm kind of chunky still. <laughs> I ain't lost no weight. But no. Right, because we are protected by Yeshia. And then, the, let me tell you that this one was so amazing to us because... After that, the next day he came back and we prayed the medication out of him that he had been taking right. for AIDS. And I have never seen nothing like it. He was throwing up all that pharmacia that he had been taking and you can smell it. Mm -hmm. You can smell the medication, smell the, the pills, medication. And everything. Right. So I'm like We've this, seen it. We've seen a lot. We may just sit up here. Oh my goodness, we have seen a lot. And it would take us hours to talk about the deliverances that just the the highlighted deliverance that we have experienced. Right? So temptation, right? Temptation is to sin. It is important that we cut off the temptation when it begins. Matthew 6 and 13. Uh, before you read that, let me say this. For our people that's in this Bible that knows the truth, and you have been, lost your job or been laid off, and the devil will tempt you. This is something the Holy Spirit might be showing you today. Mm -hmm. That people will lie. People are tempted to lie to get these benefits mm -hmm. so they can have money for rent and all that. But you, because you're putting a curse on your finances and yourself, your health, everything, your salvation. Do not lie to get government necessary. Do not lie. I'm warning you all. Please don't do it. Let Yeshaya take care of you. You call a higher by Hashem. Yeshaya pumping your fists up and cover us in this time. Yes, he will. And he, yes, he will. Mm -hmm. We're going to get Matthew 6 and 3 to 6 and 1. Yeah. Matthew chapter 6 verse Matthew chapter 6 verse 13 mm -hmm. and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom yes. and the power, power and the glory, glory forever for some time forever for half the time forever oh okay so ARW said all of this virus is another flake fake flag for the new world order but as we all know the new world order is not New 5G, they want it released. It's going to cause all kinds of damage. People that do not know our Lord, Psalm 116, verse 6 applies to them. This is the time that our Messiah, people that truly serve him, should see the mighty power of our Father, who to them that do not know him. Mm -hmm. uh, someone else says, Yes. This can definitely be used by Satan to entice people to lie for money. I lied on my unemployment last year, and it cost me a lot of time and money. Oh, I know it did, because they will come and they will find you. And she said that they will. <laughs> they will. I, I know all too well about unemployment. They will find you. It's not worth it. It is not worth it. Okay. We're going to get Galatians 6 and 1. But that's correct. Um, especially interesting with this 5G thing. I think I <coughs> said something earlier about 5G. Yeah, they had, 
originally, originally I saw this, a news thing where they said they started testing it in uh, China. What does that place start with a W? Uh, something in China. Where the whole thing started? Yeah. Yeah, and that's where they, they started it up at, and that's where the people started to get sick. Mm -hmm. So, but I'm going to tell you something. Hi. How about the three Hebrew boys that was in that fiery furnace? How about stop eating Pagalians? That'll work. What is that? What? Pagalians? What's that? <laughs> Some kind of animal that... Oh. It's, it's, a, it's a scaly anteater that they eat in China. Oh! That supposedly, because... Have you all seen those videos on those fresh markets in China. Wet and I know we're getting off topic for a second, but I, I just want to say something. <laughs> <laughs> They're called wet markets, right? Uh -huh. And they are the most disgusting things that you have ever seen. After the lesson, because don't, don't do it while we're teaching, because, you know, we'll get a report. No, just kidding. <laughs> After the lesson, Google China wet markets. Those things are nasty. And you can see why viruses can come from that. They had and, a dog on a stick. Right. <laughs> dog on sticks. Well, a big dog on a stick, a puppy on a stick. Max <laughs> on a stick. <laughs> yeah, it was that was crazy. Yeah. Google China O L I N. And it looks like an ant eater, but it has scales. That's a delicacy in China, and especially if they eat it raw. They found that strain from that um, corona. The main strain was from that pangillion and mixed with that. And you wonder, how can that be? Watch a video on wet markets and you can see if they have a strain with dog, chicken, and Everything bat, is together. and snakes, and something else, rats, all that. And they just, it's, it's and then, the, only the thing nerve is, of some people to walk around with a with a mask on. So they buying all that. The only thing they had that was that we knew of, they had one pig. They had the nurse had one pig, and right. they had all this other stuff. Right. Well, AIDS getting started, in China. <laughs> That's a <another> story. <laughs> all right, let's um, let's 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 read this. Galatians are spiritual. Restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. I think we've had Galatians. You must, for those who are spiritual, restore those who are weak. You have to do that. And we're probably going to have Galatians 6 and 1 tomorrow. But you have to do that. Some people fight you on it. Everybody don't want to be restored. Right. Some people like their sin. Some Believers people... allow sin like anger. Lying, greed, unforgiveness to remain in their hearts. Hatred. Right, hatred. It becomes a door opener and it gives the devil a foothold and you are in that spirit of bondage. You have the spirit of bondage in you. Ephesians 4 and 27. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 27. Neither give place to the devil. Neither give place to the devil. So if you are a person who recognizes that you've been given, that you have been given um, the devil a foothold in your life, and you need to humble yourself. You need to seek your shot and resist Satan. James 4 and 6. Resist the devil. Get rid of the spirit of bondage. Mm -hmm. The spirit of bondage allows those other spirits to stay. Some people don't even know they're in the spirit of bondage. And a lot of times people don't realize that you, you can have dreams. Mm -hmm. And if you have dreams that you are running inside of a house, like somebody chasing you, that's fear. So you ran into bondage, into a house of fear. You bound it, you are bound in a house of fear. Mm -hmm. If you have dreams about running into different places or being trapped in a basement, think about what that dream is about and what's taking place. And that's that spirit that's connected to that bondage that got you, that has you held into there. Right. If I explained it right, I don't mm -hmm. know. All right, let's read James 4, 6 to 8. James, chapter 4, verse 6. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, the most high resisteth the proud, but 
but give it grace unto the humble. Mm -hmm. Submit yourselves therefore to the Most High. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Mm -hmm. right. Draw nigh to a height, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. That's how you get rid of the spirit of bondage. Resist the proud. Be humble. Resist Satan. Cleanse your hands. Purify your hearts. Right? Another temptation that can lead to a type of bondage is religion. Oh, yeah. Religion. Whether it's Israelites or Christianity. Some of them are almost the same. It doesn't matter. The ver any unhealthy version of religion. The word religion, believe it or not, means to bind fast. The relig the word religion comes from the from a Latin root word, and that means to bind fast. So it talks about obligation to whatever it is that you're going to serve. Interesting. Religion can turn into a version of spiritual bondage. Because people fixate too heavily on one aspect of religion. And it becomes overemphasized in their life. And it puts fear, like fear of judgment in hell. An obsession with judgment in hell. You don't think about the blood of your child. Mm -hmm. You're so wound up on judgment in hell. That's religion. Religion is taking sacraments. Like um, sacrament, um, the whole communion. Christianity tells you, do it whenever you want to do it. That's a sacrament. That's bondage. You don't have to do it whenever you want. In fact, it's um, you don't supposed to do it whenever you want. But that's bondage. Lent is Bondage. It's demonic bondage. It's, it's, it's giving up something to get closer to the Most High. Whatever it is, it is. it's wrong. And certain Israelite rituals, bondage. Right? Bondage. You must turn to the east whenever you pray. That is religious bondage. Because not one scripture commands you to do so. <laughs> not one scripture. That is religion, religious bondage. And certain Israelite groups push that you have to turn to the east. Right? Certain Israelite groups push that you have to have wine on the Passover. They push that. That is religion. That is religious bondage. And there are so many more religious bondages that Israelite groups use and Christianity group groups use. They are rituals. And they are net, and they will have negative repercussions on your um, salvation, guaranteed. Guaranteed. Islam has religion, has a obsession for praying six times a day. I think it is five times a day praying. That is a sacrament. And sacraments are demonic. It's demonic activity. You might it's OCD in the religion form. Trying to set you free. John first John four and eighteen. 
You don't need all that. All you need is the perfect love of Yeshua. That's all you need. 1 John 4 and 18. 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. You that fear, you want to go around and you're fearing hell. You don't have to fear hell when you have the perfect love of Messiah inside of you. You don't have to fear hell. You don't because fear you're not going to hell right. if you have the perfect feet, the perfect love of Yeshua. And fear. You should respect him. Yeshua brings us rest. And we never are separated from his love. This is why we're in so much rest now. Because we are in rest with Yeshua. Someone says, Christianity teaches the following. The law is religious and sacrament. Yes, the law is religious and sacrament. You don't have to apply it. Keeping the Sabbath day is, you don't have to do that anymore. They, they throw the law book out. But when you walk up to a Christian and say, can I murder your mother? Oh no, you can't do that. But wait, one of the commandments says, thou shalt not kill. If I don't have to keep the laws, mm -hmm. I can murder your mother, I can take your car, let's go off with doctrines that people teach. And then what they do is they'll get a scripture and they'll highlight that scripture and they'll push that scripture left and right. They'll read trigger words out of the scripture to make you believe that Oh, you must pray to the east or else you are in sin. Yes. Yeah, um, they do do that because I say about 10 months ago, was a, uh, uh, like three brothers came to me and was like, well, because they prayed to the east. And I was like, well, show me that in scripture where it's a law that we're supposed to pray to the east. Mm -hmm. And they, they went to the scripture about Sol well, Solomon did it. Mm -hmm. I was like, hold on. Y'all can pray to the east if you want to, but unless you show me where it says, where a law says that I have mm -hmm. to pray to the east, then if you can't show me that, I'm not going to pray to the east. And like, you know, I'm not saying it, it's wrong to pray to the east, but you can't tell anybody that you must pray to the east. If you want to pray to the east, fine, go ahead. But you cannot tell other people who don't pray to the east that they're sinning and their prayers are not being heard because they're not praying to the east. And a lot of us are um, navigational unfriendly. <laughs> so we don't know <laughs> right. which way I'm is the east. They that. said that too. Which way the east is? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of us are <laughs> navigational unfriendly so we wouldn't know where the east is. But each and every one of those groups, they all want to core with that praying to the east, though. Because it's not just that, you know, the group I came in contact with, but there's other groups that do. There's a lot of Israelite brothers who talk about that, but they cannot prove, they cannot show a scripture that is a law that says, Thou must pray to the east. Romans 8 37 through 39. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come, mm -hmm. nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, shall be able to separate us from the love of Ahiah, which is in him, Ashiah, Yeshia, our Lord. So Paul is saying nothing, nothing, because we are conquerors, the devil. Luke, the 24th, I'm sorry, not Luke, Jude, 24th verse. 
We are truly safe. We do not continue living the same sinful life we did before. We should not live that sinful life that we lived before. Once we become, once we get an understanding, mm -hmm. one of those understandings is what we're learning on the Shabbat lessons, unconditional love. But you must understand and know that we cannot continue to live the same way we used to live with that former man. Jude the 24th verse. Jude, verse 24. Now unto him that is able to keep... wants to do this for him. He's, the old people used to say, clamoring at the bit. Glory with exceeding joy. He wants you to be in his presence. He doesn't want you to be in the um, mindset of, I got to watch out for Corona or COVID-19 or COVID-20. Lock yourself in your house. Close your windows. Close right. all your blinds. Don't go out for nothing. Have the husband in one room, the wife in another room, child in one room, have the child in another room. Everybody's on how living with people you can still keep the social, what is it called? Distance. The social, social distance. And I'm like, really? So let me say this, social distancing <laughs> goes against the Bible. Yes, it does. So people who promote and talk about social distancing, that's against the Bible. That is a sin. That's in Genesis. Every animal had a mate. Adam had a wife. So where is that at? <laughs> that is a sin. Let's read. First John three, and we're going to read verses four through ten. <laughs> Let's read. First John chapter three verse four: Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. For sin, whosoever sinneth, hath not seen him, not have known him. Mm -hmm. Little children. Let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Yes. He that committeth sin is of the devil. Mm -hmm. For the devil sinned from the beginning. Mm -hmm. For this purpose, the Son of the Most High Eye was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. That That's he right. might destroy the works of All the right. devil. All he right. that committed sin is of the devil. I, I did not make that up. It's right there in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I say that constantly. You sin, you are of the devil. But for the Son of the Most High was made manifest that he destroyed all the works of the devil, destroyed all the works of the spirit of bondage. Nine. Whosoever is born of the Most High Ahia doth not commit sin. Yes. For his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of the Most High. You cannot sin if you're in the Most High. It would hurt you to sin. Ten. In this, the children of the Most High Ahia are manifest, and the children of the devil. Mm -hmm. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of the Most High, mm -hmm. neither he that loveth not his brother. All right, so we need to be aware that we have an enemy who would like nothing, nothing more than to give us, to give him a foothold so we could be chained up and oppressed and in that bondage instead of walking in the freedom that Shia has given us. The devil is watching. The devil is lurking. He wants us to stay in bondage. He doesn't want you to think that you're free. The whole COVID-19, Satan. It's Satan. No freedoms. Can't leave your house. Can't do this. Can't do that. Restrictions on what you buy. How that many? is of the devil. There's no freedom there. No. 
but people of the Most High laugh in the face of the devil. That's right. Laugh in the face of Satan. Because we are free. And we will be free. That's right. Uh, ARW said, Elder Sir, just to put it out there, a doctor of the medical profession, a Hebrew Israelite woman, came on IG, said that she had enough of this fake virus. Um, I was telling people that a virus could not live. Uh, Somebody else know. said that too. We, we were listening to a doctor, and hopefully he's still alive. Well, we ain't heard from him. We ain't heard from him, right. He said, uh, cannot live on countertops tables for five days. She said, which I knew already. Mm -hmm. Now, once it hits the air, it dies. The bleach would kill it. Vinegar with, will, with, will kill it. Anything would kill it. And in 80 degree heat, it dies. It dies. That's why if you look at the countries in Africa, not South Africa, but look at Central Africa and look at the totals of COVID-19, they're low. That's low. That's a weak disease. No, no virus can stand withstand 80 degrees. That's why they keep it like frozen. Right, not, not too many. The only one that I know of that can withstand that is Ebola. That's the only one that I know of. But see, we all forgetting that it's not many diseases. It's only one disease. Right. And Once it gets into the body, it's, what is it? It's mucus. Mucus. And our body is not made to handle that. It's mucus. And it goes to one part of your body. Just like when you have pneumonia. I have had pneumonia like four or five times. I haven't had it in the last couple of years. But when I did have it, it's fluids, it's mucus in the lungs. And where does that come from? I had a spirit of fear. That's what fear lives. Fear lives in the lungs and in the chest. Fear, anxiety, panic. Right. Oh. And I right. got and I got delivered. I got delivered from the spirit of fear. So mm -hmm. therefore, I don't deal with pneumonia no more. The, right. the the demon was cast out of my lungs. Right. So what we're saying is that what makes you sick is mucus. Yeah. That's what makes you sick, right? Get the mucus out your body, you're healthy. Mucus is what makes you sick. Of course, the sin that you commit causes the mucus in the body because the body now has negative actions in it and negative feelings in it, and the body cannot hold negative actions and negative feelings. Thus, it produces mucus. Oh, Air Devin says she was shocked that the health department was telling lies and people are spreading lies over top of lies. She said this is madness. And what's killing the people is the radiation, is the burning up their throats. Right. Radiation has flu-like symptoms, but it will burn a hole in your throat. Right. That's, that's the same thing. It's radiation, but... If you deal with acid reflux, which is from a form of having severe fear, the acid that comes up out of your stomach, can, they can give you um, cancer in your esophagus. That's what those 5G towers do, too. They put up radiation. We saw them in uh, Syracuse being built up. It's like these towers that they have that they're going um, to... Well, we live, we live like maybe 50 feet from one in Arizona. And they would be out there really quiet. It was maybe like 50 people out there at 4 in the morning checking these towers, but you did not hear nobody. That's how quiet they lights. We remember their lights was off on their vehicles. They had people up the pole. It was like almost 50 people out there at 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning checking that tower. I don't know if it went offline or whatever happened to it, but they were out there. Fixing it, they were up high. That was not a cell tower. We knew exactly what that thing was. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened. It happened twice. They came out within a year. I don't know if it malfunctioned or whatever it was. They were quiet. 
They were so power. You have 50 people outside and you open the door, you don't hear nothing. They walk around. They up in the back of vans. They was like a white vans. And they was up in the back of them. They was doing some on laptops. They were so quiet. I was like, this is not right. Mm -hmm. It's not right. Right. Let's go first Peter 5, 8, 9. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, mm -hmm. whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Right. Let's go on um, 1 John 4 and 4. So there is no, or 1 Peter 5, 8, 9. So there is no reason for us to be afraid of the devil. No reason. There's no reason for us to be afraid of any weapons or none of that stuff. Right, because he that is in you is greater than he that is in, in the, the world. world. That's Thank right. Y'all better realize who you serve and who your power right. is. Mm -hmm. Recognize your power. Right, so let's just read First John 4 and 4 since we all read it. First John, chapter 4, verse 4. Ye are of a height, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. This is why all believers need to work on renewing the mind. Yeah. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind which is being, which is testing you, that you may discern what is the will of your child. Right. Be good and acceptable and perfect. Mm -hmm. Right? You must do that. That's Romans 12 and 2. You have to do that. Transform your mind. Renewing of your mind. Getting rid of the spirit of bondage. Let your shire put your trust in your shire. Let Yeshua lead you. Let Yeshua guide you. Let his Holy Spirit live in you. And let that spirit lead you. And let that spirit walk, help you walk in your path. That path that you walk is a path of freedom. That's right. A path of righteousness. That's right. A path that breaks all bondage of the devil. That's right. And this is bondage of the devil. But because you walk in the newness of your shine, it does not matter if 50,000 people come hacking and coughing on you. You're going to stand there strong and denounce every single spirit in the name of your shine. <laughs> <laughs> well, you gotta get rid of the spirit before you can start healing. <laughs> right? Let's go Romans 8, 14, and 15. Oh, I just realized what you all said. You're quoting a song. <laughs>
people won't stay in the house, so we're going to start letting so many people in in the store at one time. And because people just keep coming. And I'm like, well, don't people need food? Like, what are you supposed to do? You need food. You need things. So you're not supposed to go out. So what they're going to do is, because people won't stay in the house, they're only going to let so many people in the store at times. So you're going to be lined up outside this big old store. And then they say you can only buy one of this, two of So if they have ground beef, you can only get two packs. Chicken, you can only get two packs. If it's a family pack, you can only get one. And I'm just like, this is crazy. And guess what? She told me, she said, the clothing area is going to be wrapped up. Uh, cut off completely because it's not essential. People don't need clothes, you know. So you're not going to be able to buy clothes or anything at all. And I'm just like, wow. They're well, getting people prepared for something bigger to come. That's, what the, that's what's going on. Something bigger to come. This is a, a test run. Let's go John 8, 31 and 32. <clears throat> This too shall blow over. Yes. As each quote unquote virus comes along, notice how when the swine flu was coming along. Okay, that started a little something going on. Then it went to H1N1, right? SARS. Remember that one? Still, people were not affected by it. Then, Ebola. That's when people started to, wait, 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 wait. But it still was not enough. Then, now comes Corona. Oh, what was that other one? The Zika virus. That's oh, yeah, Zika. Well, did anybody really care about that one? Yeah, that was in Central, Central um, America. They really didn't care about that one too much. So the powers, well, certain individuals, Corona, right? Now we got the world's attention, okay? We're not going to go. I got a feeling that people are going to start fighting people to make them stay in your house. You know how you get people that, that, that's freaking out about it? Right. Why not y'all stay in the house and then they're going to start... Remember that they, they, they have, uh, if you live on a border state, you have those fanatics, those, yeah, that's um, what I was trying to say. those America fanatics during the border states or in Montana, for whatever reason, it's a lot of people in Montana. <laughs> but you have in the south where the Mexican border is, you have these American vigilantes, right? So now you're going to have vigilantes for Corona. Stop you. Wait, 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 what you doing? Why your eye look red? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Why are you sweating? What's going on with you? My wife met one in Walmart as a cashier. Let's go John 8, and we're going to read 31 and 32. I know I said I'm not going to talk about this bondage, worldly mess, but sometimes we interject. John 8, because we're talking about bondage. Yeah. Yeah. So next week when we talk about death and dumb spirit, we'll see what comes from that one. <laughs> um, dumb. <laughs> John 8, 31 and 32. John chapter 8, verse 31. Then said Yeshia to those Israelites which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Continue in my word. You are his disciples. 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So, Israelites who Yeshua spoke to believed that they were certainly not in bondage to anything. The 12 did not believe that they were in bondage to anything. The deacons in Acts, the 8th chapter, or 7th chapter. Not bound in anything. Stephen wouldn't have came and told the Pharisees their history if he had the spirit of bondage. And fear. Yeshua's word 
were your words were deep, spiritual and spiritual bondage. Mm -hmm. Shia tried to tell him that. Yeshaya tries to tell us today. Watchful. Be watchful. Be mindful. Things are going to happen. There's going to be wars and rumors of wars. He told us this was going to happen. There's going to be pestilence. He said that this was going to happen. Famines and pestilence all over the place. He said that this was going to happen. He also told us what to do. To Keep your mind him. on him. Let's read John 8 and 34 again. John chapter 8, verse 34. Yeshia answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. So does this really need to be underlined? Yeshia thought it did because he said, Verily, verily. Listen to what I am saying. Ephesians 2. We do not become sinners by committing specific acts. We commit specific acts of sin because we are sinners. Because we are sinners. The problem is not isolated acts, but the things that are in the heart. Little isolated incidents here and there. It's the things that are in your heart. Mm -hmm. They show that the sin that you commit through three. Ephesians chapter two, verse one. And you have you walked according to this world. You did December twenty fifth. You did Easter Sunday, even if you did not go to church. You did those things. You celebrated Thanksgiving. You celebrated your birthdays. You did that because you were walking in accordance to the prince of the power of the air, which is the devil. And you were the child of disobedience. Mm -hmm. Verse 3. Among whom also... We all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and whereby nature, the children of wrath, even as our others. So both the apostles, the readers of the apostles, they understood the nature bound in sin, and they understood the trespasses in sin. When they heard the name Yeshia and his grace in Yeshia, people's hearts remained cold, like dead men and dead women, the children of disobedience. Why, do they, why are they the children of disobedience? Because they deny the very, they deny that they are in spiritual bondage. When they came against Yeshua and says, how dare you say that we are bound, we're in bondage. How dare you say we are not free. We are seed of Abraham. Automatically, their conversation, Yeshua knew that they were in spiritual bondage. The way that we speak, you got to pray to the east. Spiritual bondage. It's okay to drink wine. Spiritual bondage bondage. You don't have to, there is no laws anymore. You're under grace, spiritual bondage. Baptism washes away sin, spiritual bondage. It's okay to pray over your food, spiritual bondage. Uh, Sister Sally is looking down, smiling on us during her funeral service, spiritual bondage. All of this spiritual bondage to keep you away from your shine. Yes. So a person has spiritual bondage by believing lies? 
by not only not even believing lies, but not even checking it out. Not even checking it out. Go with whatever the elders or the pastor says. Or anyone on the internet. Or anyone on the internet. Any person can get a camera and go on YouTube and make themselves sound convincing. How do they do it? Because they use trigger words. Even if they don't know what a trigger word is, they use certain words. Listen to your news reports. All of them use the same trigger words of fear and oppression to keep you full of fear and oppression. But you have been delivered, or you will be delivered in a few moments from the spirit of bondage. So it's like this. So we know that they're telling us to stay in the house, don't go out, wear a face mask. That's fear. So if you have someone teaching, yeah, they're trying to promote fear and separation. And then that person going to tell you, you know, um, just go out and get what you need. Close your windows, close your curtains, just stay in. Just don't, for the next three days, just don't go out. But then, but you already said that other people is promoting fear. So what are you doing too? Promoting fear. You're doing the same thing. Watch out for these devils. I'm saying you don't be bound. You do what you got to do. You're protected by your shy. Now, if you're sinning, that's something different. But if you're walking in your shadow, then you're covered in your shadow. He tells us this in his word. We go our we go out of our way to show freedom by being different. But sometimes being different, you become a clone or a manifestation to bondage. Yeshaya said that this sinful this sinfulness act affects every part of our life our minds we don't think clearly we may have we may be real well educated high have a high IQs but when it comes to spiritual things stupid <coughs> desire when we when we are on our own and our most honest we wreck in bondage to sin. And when it comes to your shy, and when it comes to being delivered, because we allow that bondage to stay, we allow that bondage and it drives our will, we stay in captivity. The truth, no matter how clear the truth can be, no matter how clear the shy brings forth the truth, we will not be moved because the spirit of bondage has got us afflicted. We cannot respond to the gospel until we want Yeshua. And we cannot want Yeshua by simply saying, I want Yeshua. There's a will that's involved. Your will has to belong to Yeshua. It is beyond our power our will has to belong to your shine. Not what not our will belonging to bondage. Only his grace can set us free. Only his grace can allow it if we trust him. And we must trust him. That's right. We must trust him. We must. We have to look even more to your shine. Anything. The, the, this world is diagnosing everything as corona. Stuck, broken toe. You got the corona. And you break your toe, you're automatically going to have a fever. Nope, you got corona. Yeah. Automatically. You ate bad guacamole. You got corona. You got hay fever. You got corona. You got sinus problems. You got corona. Everything. Well, the doctors now, they say, have the right to determine who they're going to treat, who's going to live, who's going to die. So if you're older and you're dealing, you had a worse situation, then they're not treating you. 
That's that's because they can sit up there and not treat an old person, and the Holy Spirit can come through, and Mother can heal them people, and then people don't have may not even have nothing much as an idea or aspirin. Right. So who gives somebody the right to say who lives and who dies? Exactly. The love of many shall wax cold. Mm-hmm. You the have love people of many have, shall wax cold. You have had people fall out of the airplane 30,000 feet and still live. Right. What's their time? Deliverance time. Excuse me. Deliverance time. Time to be set free from the spirit of bondage. Oh, yes. Right? Deliverance time. <laughs> All right, let's get it. Bondage of bondage. In me. In me. In me. <laughs> and explain. And explain. With as much detail. With as much detail. My involvement. My involvement. With addictions. With addiction. Drugs. Drugs. Alcohol. Alcohol. Cigarettes. Cigarettes. Food. Food. Gambling. Gambling. Smoking. Smoking. Shopping. Shopping. Prescription drugs. Prescription drugs. Bondage to sin. Bondage to sin. Captivity to Satan. Captivity to Satan. Compulsion. Compulsion. Control. Control. Fear of death. Fear of death. Idolatry. Idolatry. Injustice. Injustice. Insecurity. Insecurity. Religious bondage. Religious bondage. Religious tradition. Religious tradition. Serving to corrupt. Serving to corruption, spiritual blindness, spiritual blindness, and deafness, and deafness, traditions of men, traditions of men, as well as as well as any works of the flesh, any works of the flesh. I hereby renounce them. I hereby renounce them. Promising to break all ties. Promising to break all ties with and never. With and never to participate to participate in them again. In them again. By the authority. By the authority. I have in the shire. I have in your shire. I hereby bind. I hereby bind. You spirit of bondage. You spirit of bondage. And each and every. And each and every. Helper spirit. Helper spirit. Accompanying you. Accompanying you. I fill your mouth. I fill your mouth. And cover you completely. And cover you completely. With the invincible. With the invincible. Blood of your shire. Blood of your shire. You are herewith bound. You are herewith bound. Unable and forbidden. Unable and forbidden. To cause me additional harm. To cause me additional harm. To speak to me further. To speak to me further, lies of the devil, lies of the devil, or to call, or to call any other emissary, any other emissary of Satan, of Satan, for assistance, for assistance in the mighty name of Yeshua, in the mighty name of Yeshua, spirit of bondage, spirit of bondage, and each and every helper spirit, and each and every helper spirit. Accompanying you, accompanying you by the authority of Yeshua. By the authority of Yeshua, I command you to. I command you to leave now. Leave now. Go to wander. Go to wander in dry places. In dry places. Never to return. Never to return. Go now. Go now. I seal. I seal. Shut all doors. Shut all doors that were previously that were previously opened. Opened with the blood. With the blood of Yeshua. Of Yeshua. We are set free. We are set free. Right. Second Corinthians 3 and 12. Now the, the Lord is the spirit where in which the spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty. That's right. Discerning of spirits. We still have divination, familiar spirits, whoredoms. Next week, uh, we're going to preach. Week after that, spirit of invalid and a deaf and dumb spirit. 
Okay? Keep calm, people. Keep the commandments. Love are high. Love your neighbors, love yourselves. Okay. Our Shabbat is going to be at 2 p.m. tomorrow. We're going to have Unconditional Love Part 4. So, with that being said, um, we're going to close out tonight's service. Uh, we'll give a few moments to see if there are any questions. And if there are no questions, which I see they're not, I want to thank you for joining us on live stream. Uh, we pray that you do not operate with the spirit of bondage because that's what the world wants you to be. Tomorrow, 2 p.m., Unconditional Love Part 4. If you have enjoyed this lesson, and have found it educational, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel for future teachings. Also, remember to hit the bell to be alerted when another teaching goes live. All right, so we do have one question. Oh. I keep seeing people who look alike. Is that familiar spirit? Uh, no. If you see people that look alike, I don't think you that's... You can't say that's demonic. Yeah. People look alike. You can't mean, say that's demonic. We can't say that that's a familiar spirit. That's not what a familiar spirit is. So. If you see people face morph, that's different. But people who look alike, no, those wouldn't be familiar spirits. Familiar spirits are religious spirits. <laughs> They're the ones who start up religion. They're the ones who bring forth lies and deception. Fake Holy Spirit. Yeah, fake Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about familiar spirits probably in May. We're going to talk about familiar spirits. If you have if you have any questions, we do have teachings on familiar spirits. We have a lot of teachings on familiar spirits. So you just go through the history. And, and find the teachings that talk about demons. We talk about familiar spirits on those. But we will have a lesson strictly on familiar spirits in the upcoming weeks. Okay? All right, so we want to thank you all for joining us. Questions, send it to get to the wilderness one at gmail.com. Kwame Yashirala to you all. Kwame Yashirala.